What's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in. Hey, everybody. This is Mr. Clark. Special episode of Conversations with Mr. Clark. With my good friend, Nicholas Wildstar. What's up, everybody? Thank you for having me, brother. Oh, you got a special guest later on. Talk about your special guest you have later on. Oh, oh yeah. Discussing. For sure. I do this uh, live stream show I call uh, Black Side of Liberty, where I talk about libertarianism from a black perspective and um i've had several guests on my show presidential candidates dan berman uh vice presidential candidate now uh ken armstrong for the libertarian party and um i'm having on later today since i'm having ladies week <laughs> i have my wife crystal on uh, for mother's day and um today i'm going to be having on angela mccardo who is a former candidate for uh, Congress out in L.A. County, so uh, be sure to check that out, you know, Black Side of Liberty on YouTube, Facebook, all that good stuff. But yeah, should be an interesting show because she's a protester, you know. I, I met her doing activism out in Los Angeles and um, became more familiar with her once I had joined the Libertarian Party, which she's affiliated with, so... Should be talking about that because she's been involved in the reopen California protests here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, she was, was was she at the um, Capitol? No, she was not. She was at um, she was at the the one out in L.A. Uh -huh. Yeah. So should be nice to talk to her. Turnout? Say what? In L.A. In LA was it a big turnout? Right now we had out here? Uh, no. Sacramento was the largest. But uh, there was a pretty big turnout for L.A. Um, I heard police were a bit more uh, uh, aggressive <laughs> out there. Uh, and that's to be understood, of course, since L.A. has a lot more, um, I guess, uh, uh, more harsh rules when it comes to enforcing social distancing um you know less relaxed as uh back uh, up there in you know in northern california so um we'll see what happens man because i know there was a well, uh, a rodeo yeah. recently out in shasta <laughs> with over yeah. two thousand people yeah that's up there in northern california and they were supposed to reopen uh, on the 8th, I believe. But now, since Governor Newsom found out about their uh, about the rodeo, uh, that they're going to extend the stay home, you know, uh, order for that county. So, it's a lot of shit going on here in California, man. Yeah. So, we were talking about a de-escalation tactical team that we saw somewhere in, was that, Michigan? They were... Oh no! Um, out in Georgia for the Georgia. Uh, Ahmad Aubrey. So, can you explain who they are and what you know about them so far? Yeah, from what I've found out, uh, they're a group of black militiamen <laughs> calling themselves the NFAC, uh, which is supposed to stand for "Not Fucking Around" crew. But um, <laughs> uh, they're a group of, I guess, ex-military, ex-law enforcement. Um, and they're you know, black and they're all black and they're armed and apparently they ain't not fucking around so they uh, attended the protests out there in Georgia where Ahmaud Aubrey was uh, shot and killed and um, they were out there I guess protecting the protesters against what was perceived to be hostile police uh, hostile police presence so um, they were out there to protect them they had their display of guns, and the police didn't even come down the street. I mean, you see the videos, and they stay completely separated, opposed to where, um, you know, videos were like out in L.A., where they had a recent fu funeral, and, you know, police were aggressive towards the people there and started throwing them down and, you know, um, uh, spray pep uh, spraying them with pepper spray. Um, it was just really violent, so... Hopefully that won't yeah. happen again. Uh, that's what they were out there to prevent, you know? So, yeah. God, that's crazy. Know. 
Yeah, so they were out there for that. And, 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 and you know, I, we were talking about earlier how you got, you know, these white militia groups such as the Proud Boys and whatnot. And then, you, you know, you see how they, they, they do what they do. They sometimes get away with hitting police officers. I've seen videos of them actually hitting police officers and getting away with it. Um, do you think this um, de-escalation tactical team might have some type of government entity tied into it? Uh, you said government value? Yeah, like they have some type of government um, association or entity a part of it. I don't think they should have any government affiliation whatsoever. I think they should be um, only but uh, did, accountable did, did, to did, the people did, of the community. Did, hold on, but did you also say that they made it a point to um, uh, say that they're not affiliated with the Black Panther Party at all? Yes, they have made that distinction to let people know they are not the new Black Panther Party. Um, so for all of those people that are thinking those are, you know, new Black Panther Party members out there being armed, uh, showing a display of force, no, that is not them. Um, and they want to make that distinction clear because the Black Panther Party is completely different in, as far as its um, agenda, <laughs> political agenda, and um, its desires for the community. What is, what is what is the not fucking around crew agenda? Do you know? Just basically to provide, I guess, um, paramilitary defense for people of the inner community. Like you said, more so de-escalation type of uh, protection. More so for the community against police officers. Versus where your idea is helping more of the uh, conflicts that happen in the inner city and have people of the community deal with that on their own instead of calling in police to do so. Uh, I don't, I, or so far, I haven't heard them make any offer of that. Uh, so that's where the black community needs to pay attention to what's going on because um, it's a it's a possibility that these people could be perceived as being a threat, of course, to the government. And if they're looked at as being... Um, Whenever black people get organized and, and we ready uh, on our own, we're a threat. Of course. Whenever we get intellectually independent, whenever we get together and unify, despite race, uh, light skin tone, dark skin tone, whatever, whatever, mm -hmm. um, or class, we're a threat. You know, it's up, but they infiltrate our systems and they almost like destroy us almost immediately. Mm -hmm. You know, and they and they infiltrate our systems with our own brothers and sisters. You know that. Absolutely, and I, that's what I'm saying. I don't know who is in charge of this group. You know, I've never heard of them before. They kind of just popped up out of nowhere. So that's why I believe everybody should pay close attention to, you know, who this group is because it's a possibility it could get us all in trouble, you know, with their uh, with their tactics, especially if... Like, I mean, we just don't know. Right. Are they, or, are they organized is another question. Because right. that was my problem with Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. You know, I love Black Lives Matter. I love everybody. Everybody <coughs> But my problem with Black Lives Matter was I felt like it was the protest. It was the call-out culture. Mm -hmm. It was stand up in the middle of the street for this and that. And then once that disintegrates, then what's next? Right. I feel like Black Lives Matter set black people up for failure mm -hmm. because they had no plan. Right. Well, the you, march, you, you, you march, you protest, you say this, you yell that, you say no justice, no peace. And then you have no plan to protect our communities. Exactly. Black, you go home. My problem with Black Lives Matter is they're not militant enough. Right. And then their so demand see, for political. So when I see these brothers out there protesting and they have no organization, they have no uniform, they have no type of tactical team to protect them um, by any means. It looks like a bunch of scattered monkeys and shit running around the jungle <laughs> in Jumanji. Well, like you said, what's the what's the end goal? What what do you really want, and how can you really achieve the change that you're out there protesting against? 
uh, whether it's this NFSC group or, you know, Black Lives Matter, that's that's where we want to get down to the bottom of it, resolve the issue. And you're right. Black Lives Matter never presented that. They still have not, which is why they do nothing but corral the troops to kind of go out there and um, bang on pots and, you know, raise hell in, street, in, in the streets and shit. But it, it, it isn't producing any change. Everybody has an agenda. You know it. Everybody has a fucking yeah. agenda. And you don't see the the creators of Black Lives Matter out there protesting. You see them doing interviews with Oprah. They made their money. Know, and they, they made their money. Yeah, exactly. They, they living their best life they, right they now. They got their chicken. They got their chicken. You hear me? All right, what? Like, they got their chicken. It's like Black Lives Matter is like Pepsi. It's like Coca-Cola. It's a brand. Right. It's exactly. a brand. Right. Because if it wasn't a brand, you would not see all lives matter. You would not see blue lives matter. You would not see um, fat girls' lives matter. You know what I mean? <laughs> you wouldn't see all this stuff. Everybody has an agenda. You know it as well as I do. You know, these people in their political organizations use our fights, our rights, and our mm -hmm. causes to further their agendas. They're hidden agendas at that, you know, because a lot of these agendas are hidden agendas because they're not really being uh, forthright with the people and letting us know what what the end goal is, what they're, right. what we're uh, planning on getting out of this. Right. You know, with the civil rights movement, I can, I get it. You know, we're fighting for civil rights. We're fighting for fighting for equality. Mm -hmm. We're fighting for equity. We're fighting for our share. For Black Lives Matter, I think. It's it's like every time it's a tragedy, black people it's, get together. It's like every time it's a candle, like you want to get galvanize the community. You know what I mean? Why can't we get together and galvanize the community when there's not a death? Exactly. When there's not a um, heinous crime right. or atrocity uh, uh, inflicted upon our people. Right. How come? How come we always gotta go take the streets when 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 we we are being assassinated? Why can't we take the streets to, to promote some type of unity, gathering, uplifting, some type of uh, 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 connecting with one another? You know what I mean? Yeah. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean... Um, but I'm the crazy one. Right. <laughs> well, we're both crazy one, because right? I'm, I'm also doing the same thing. And my pursuit is to do so to make that political change by running for office. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like they, people they, think they, that's they, crazy, they, you know? People, people will always get at you because you're a brother with dreadlocks. You know, you're a free thinker. You think for yourself. You don't, you know, you don't look like the way they want you to look. Right. You don't think the way they want you to think. So they're going to naturally hate on you, brother. Oh you yeah, for me? sure. And I, speak, I don't speak highly no, no, of the no, Democratic no. Party. <laughs> no, 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 because sometimes Wild Star, I know you, brother. Sometimes you could be a little out there with your antics, and you know, and but that's part of who you are, you know. And I'll never forget when um, uh, you clowned me on your Twitter, you know. <laughs> but you know, I know that's who you are. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you know, I wouldn't respond to that because I know who you are, so I, I don't, I don't have to go out there and respond to the antics or, or nothing like that. But a lot of people don't know who you are. They don't know your heart, and, and, and they don't understand the the fight that you really um, you really want to do good. You're just trying to put it in the in the best effort that you know how. You exactly. Know? A lot I of mean, people don't understand that. And, and and right now, I think that's the radicalism that we kind of need to channel that energy. And um, my desire to make the change through politics is a uh, is a kind of a, a gateway for me to achieve that. And it's, it's sad that the, um, the demands for the black community get put on our shoulders. You know what I'm saying? Mine as a political candidate, yours as, um, you know, someone that is, um, you know, been a, uh, a victim of tragedy, you know, and, and that shouldn't be shifted onto your but shoulders. Most people, most people are volunteer victims. I wouldn't consider myself the victim of, of anything, but I, I see what you're saying and your point is and what you're trying to point, but, you know, 
I'm a warrior. You know, I'm a fighter. Yeah. You know, um, but I'm saying the black community you know, put that responsibility am, on even you. Though I am. I am a, uh, somebody who, who who who's been neglected and 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 uh, uh, done wrong by the system. The system has failed the Clark family. That is true. Um, uh, uh, at the same time, you know, a lot of people are volunteer victims. They 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 continue their whole lives as 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 volunteer victims. They live their whole lives as volunteer victims. Right. I think something with 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 my life is that I've I've realized that God doesn't make mistakes. God knows what He does. God has ordained our steps and our calling. You know what I mean? Like God knows what 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 you know he's predestined this life Absolutely. he knew what he knew from before pre meaning beginning he knew before you know he knew me before i was in my mother's womb and destined means he knew me after god predestined my life so I, you know I, I believe that a lot of people since they don't understand that that they that god has predestined their lives they have been become um volunteer victims mm-hmm. because they feel like things just happen either on their accord or on the uh, energy accord. You know, that's why I don't believe in all that. I know a lot of people believe in like the energy. They say, oh, I don't believe in God. I believe in the creator energy and all that shit. And I'd be like, well, dumb, dumb, who created energy? You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> you know, gave us this platform, you know? So, you know, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in, in higher power. And I Absolutely. believe that we are all called. God has ordered our footsteps to where we are today and where we stand today, you being the political guy that you are, because people don't know the price that you pay to be where you are. This is true. I mean, it's a lot of sacrifice that comes with being the messenger. You know, we've learned that through the life of Christ um, and any other person that has stepped up to the plate to speak the truth to the masses. Um, and, uh, I guess it's, it's a weight on our shoulders that we accept, but yet at the same time, the, the people that we're trying to free, so to speak, we're trying to, you know, let my people go <laughs> and get out there and uh, plead on their behalf. But then we're ostracized and, um, you know, scrutinized by that same group. It makes it difficult, you know, and, and, like I, like I was saying about the black community putting the responsibility of fighting for our freedom on those people that have been victimized by the system. Uh, your family, you know what I mean? Uh, and, and instead of the culture stepping up to the plate as individuals and saying enough is enough, instead of waiting until the tragedy to happen, step up, do it now. You know, you have your opportunity to kill it in its tracks before it even, you know, takes off. And instead of us waiting to the point where it's it affected us all and it's done its damage, you know, we we um, kind of just sit back and complain about it. And that's what I see about this shooting that happened. You know, there was um, a shooting before that. A uh, uh, brother named Stephen Taylor that was shot and killed uh, in Walmart in um, San Leandro, California. There San wasn't Leandro. Any, yeah, there wasn't any protest about that, you know? Um, there was a sister that was shot and killed. I believe her name was Brianna Taylor. Uh, she was shot and killed in her home. Uh, there wasn't any protest about that, you see? So it's like we, we pick and choose these instances where we're finally going to say it's enough is enough. Now we're going to take up arms and do something about it. But... If your if your display isn't to create that everlasting change, then it's nothing but a stunt, and that's what I see this as being right now. It's nothing but a stunt because none of these people are out there um, proposing any um, political change. None of these people are talking about um, any candidates, and if they do, most likely they're going to be like the um, armed protesters, black militiamen that escorted that congressman out in, in Michigan. You know, she was a Democrat fearing for her life. So they went out there and protected her simply on because of that. Had nothing to do with principle uh, or, uh, you know, defending liberty or uh, um, fighting for we the people. It had everything to do with defending her because she was a black Democrat in fear of her life. What if she was a black Republican in fear of her life? 
Would they have done the same thing? You know? Probably not. Exactly. Probably not. Right. Um, so we need to do our research because the Democratic Party has never served us. I mean, it's the party of Joe Oh, Pro don't laws. get me started on the Democrats. <laughs> do not get me started on the Democrats. <laughs> do not get me started on the Democrats. Hey, we got to talk about it in some way, shape, or form, oh, man. Oh, man. Because it needs to happen. We, we got to get away from it. Crooked ass. Look, look, the Democrats, you know... I'm a firm believer in the truth. You know, most of these Negroes weren't even considered thinking about Democrats until JFK, okay? Mm -hmm. Probably JFK, probably the only true Democrat that ever existed, who was probably assassinated by his own party. But hey, what do I know, right? Um, JFK was a good man who should be alive today. If the Democrats were smart, they would have protected him with everything that they had. Because since the death of JFK, that party has gone to shit, okay? Um, they have failed constantly and consistently when it comes to being a beacon for the community that elects them. Right. You know, they have done a tremendous job when it comes to painting the word Republican is dirty. Mm -hmm. They has done. They have done a tremendous job when it comes to um, being a symbol of hope, change, equality, justice, and Jesus. They have done a tremendous job when it comes to being a symbol, a symbol, which means they have done a, a good job at being a, a, a brand of that, a look of that. They have not um, 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 showed any type of integrity as a party. They have not shown any growth as a party. Mm -hmm. They are still as corrupt as they were when they founded the um, Ku Klux Klan. Right. You see, the thing is, though, at that time, their 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 passion wasn't directed. They have directed their passion, and now when their passion is, let's not get it uh, um, confused. They want power. Okay, let's, let's get this straight. They want power. Mm -hmm. they, they, they want to, you know, they, they, um, these are totalitarians we're talking about. You know, and these people, of course. you know, these people want power. It's all about power and legacy around here. And well, since they want power, they will get it by any means, even if it means deceiving the people in hiding behind such things as hope, change, justice, and Jesus. Right. You know, the Democrats have deceived our people masterful in, in a masterful way when it comes to saying a Republican is this, a Republican is that, mm -hmm. you know, um, um, Jesus, one of the, the greatest American that ever lived. I'm teasing. Um, Jesus, the greatest, the greatest man that ever lived, the greatest person that ever lived. He says in John 15, 12, one of my favorite Bible scriptures, love each other as I have loved you. If the Democrats love Jesus so much, as they claim, you know, as, as a lot of these so-called people claim, then they would love their enemy and they would love their neighbor despite political agenda as they love themselves and as Jesus has loved them, you know. But since they're so focused on agendas and since people are so focused on um, class and race, and um, we're, we're, we're living in such a um, materialistic society, an individualistic society. It's all about individualism and materialism. Mm -hmm. You know how people are, wild star. Oh, These yeah. People, you know, and, and it's really not about black or white. It's about green at the end of the day. It's mm -hmm. blue now because the hundred dollar bills are blue now. You know, so it, 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 it's, you know, the money plays a big role in how we view each other, even as black people. Even as black people, because in, in, the, in the black community, there's a such thing as rich and there's a such thing as hood rich. Yep. Now, Wild Star, what's the difference between rich and hood rich? <laughs> Explain to the people, please. Oh, my goodness. Hood rich is you got. You got more than most, you know what I'm saying? You got a washer and a dryer. You got a dishwasher. Shit. You got a refrigerator to make ice. You know what I'm saying? 
Shit, you got a big screen TV. Shit, whether it's a 40 inch, 50 inch, a flat screen, any any flat screen TV. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, because people don't understand, it's little things like that that can separate the haves and the have-nots, you know? And um, we look at that as a, as a community, the black community, to put each other up on a pedestal. You know, I have people come over to my house and they're like, oh, you living like a king and stuff. I'm like, I'm renting this shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't own the house. <laughs> it isn't mine, you know? So don't give me Not any yet. accolades Not for yet. acquiring it. Not yet, though. Not yet, because you're getting there. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, my plan is to own land. I mean, realistically, we need to be on the land. Watching, everybody that's working right now, we're creating declaring ownership that you're going to own and everything that you touch that is yours, all you got to do is receive it. Hey, yeah, man. What saying? I like man. that. I hey, that right? <laughs> I decree and declare that the rest of this year is going to be the best of your year. You're so right. Y'all just got to receive it. As the people watching, you just got to receive it. But it, it's so serious, you know, when I, I say that you're really hood that. rich and rich, the reason I try to point that out is because, you know, it's different when you're um, at a level in life where you could grab others and bring them up with you. Right. The Democratic Party has had that chance. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the Libertarian Party isn't the best party. I'm a Libertarian. It's not the best party. Well, it's no not, party is the best party. I mean, nobody, no party is the best party. But black people need to wake up. Absolutely. Well, black that's the thing is to wake, wake the fuck up. Yeah. And well, smell the fucking coffee. Well, and no, the the Democrats isn't going to gonna serve us. Keurig machine. Right. And it's good coffee, and it's strong, and 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 and, and if we don't wake up and smell it and taste it, like receive it. Then we're going to get left when yeah. it comes to these uh, economics. You know, when it comes to um, the marijuana, the cannabis, we're going to get left behind. Yep. If we don't get up and wait for the fucking coffee, we're going to get left behind when it comes to cannabis. You know, and then, you know, these people, if it affects us, it's illegal. It should be banned. It, it, it's bad. But when it affects them and their people, then, then it, it's, it's a mental health crisis. Right. It's, opioid it's a medical epidemic. problem. It's a medical problem. You know? You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. They gonna, and, then, and then, but once it's good for them and it's good for us and they can make money off it, like um, alcohol, like liquor. Liquor was illegal. It was prohibited. Mm-hmm. They found out, okay, we can, we can make, you know, Jesus turned water into wine. We can sell this shit. Yeah, they got to make they, some they, money they, off they, of they, it. They, now they've taken the herb that God gave us, that the Rastaman is out there in Jamaica. Uh, in jail for smoking, going yeah. out there to the jungle, getting the weed and just smoking it, smoking the cannabis freely, because it's part of the world, it's part of the earth. Now to even grow a plant that can uh, feed you uh, medicinally, you have to have all types of licenses. Right, and you pay tens of thousands of dollars to acquire to it even too. make money off of it. Yeah, after they done locked our people up. Yep, throwing us in the bottom of. 20 year life sentences. So where does the life. payback come in? The and play? now they're making over $20 million off. And now there's so many uh, uh, marijuana dispensaries in, in, in South Sacramento. Mm -hmm. I mean, not, not South Sacramento, Del Paso Heights. Your damn head is spin. And that's where I've talked about before, instead of reparations, restitutions would be best because we could target those companies no, that are... No, 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 Listen, no, 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 you target the companies that are profiting the most off of black people, no, 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 black the black and brown community, and those are the people that you find and you take the money from. Stop, 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 stop. No, 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 wait. Wait. Uh-huh. We will never, ever, ever... Ever, 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 forever, ever, 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 stop fighting for reparations. You hear me? But Rep what we need, we need was you, know, you talk about restitution. Let me tell you why you could get no, no, restitutions no, 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 quicker than reparations. Listen, listen, restitution is okay. I don't look okay, but to get to restitution, there has to be some type of fight. To, to get to restitution, there has to be some type of uh, negotiable agreement. 
to be restituted for a certain whatever it is. But there's so, restitution that happens all the time. Say I know, for instance, I know, but what I'm saying, reparation, that's the problem. Restitution happens all the time. Reparations does not. But restitution but does not trickle down to us. That's but, where we got to kill it. But reparations is trickled down to us. Because we are That's the fight. Slaves. It's not. We're not sons of we're not we're we are sons of slaves. We're not immigrants. We didn't come here on, on, on and goddamn it um across the walls and uh un, under fences and, and, and on ships and mm-hmm. that, that. Well, we did come on ships, we came on slave ships, damn it. You know, we came on slave ships. You know what I mean? Yeah. We came in the we didn't come on the come we came from the galley of the ship, the bottom of the boat. We were stuck on top of each other like sardines, you know what I mean? All right, so, so let me need, give you an example. We need our reparations because that's what's owed to us. Let me give we you an example. This country, we cannot. You cannot sit here. You're right. Star, I will not allow you to sit here and tell me that we need to stop focus on reparations. I didn't we'll say that. Restitution. I didn't say that. You did. I say said this. No, you said that. I said instead, no, I restitutions said. could be. Easily provided quicker than reparations. You're deflecting. We still need it. No, no this is the thing. All right, let me give you an example. Let me talk. Everything. Let me give you an example. Wild All right, so check this Wild out. Star. Wild star. What? We should have never gave up the talk, the fight, the conversation about reparations. Who's reparations. controlling that conversation right now? Democrats, so Republicans. Who's controlling that conversation right now? Who's controlling that narrative? Yeah. We the people are. No, we're not, man. Yes, or, we are. Man, yes, we that's are. a democratic-controlled yes, conversation. Are. The only reason reparations are being addressed is because you have groups like ADOS. The, the Who's African- behind them? Listen, listen. You have groups like ADOS who are forcing the, these politicians to address the black agenda. Without groups like ADOS, without groups like the Congressional Black Caucus, we would not have these... Uh, issues of ours addressed to the Senate, to the Congress, to those who are needed when it comes to reparations. You know? This is the thing, man. I'm sick of the slow time shit. We want shit to get done right now. For of instance... Of course we want shit to get done right now. Let me, let me tell you but, this, alright? But nothing happens overnight. You yes, it can! We gotta and stop thinking that. The, shit the, can the, happen the, overnight. When it comes to the police use of force being updated. That's a, you know, that law hasn't been updated since 1872. That's eight years after the Emancipation of Proclamation. So if you have a law, a police law that hasn't been updated, yeah. the use of force law hasn't been updated since 1872, you think our reparations are going to come overnight? You, you get the right people in charge. Come, there's no way in hell the reparations are going to come overnight. You get the right people in charge, you certainly will get those overnight. You get the right people in charge. Everybody has an agenda. And most of these politicians have been bought out by corporate and private interests, and you know it. Of course, you know the majority it. of you them have. It. So when you say you get the right people in there, you get the right people in there. But what happens is they get corrupted. The system corrupts you. And if they you don't get corrupted, then they then they see what your agenda is and try to strip your agenda from you slowly but surely. You so know then how if, this game goes. If we if we think like that, then why continue to support the system? Why continue because to vote we Republican have to or Democrat? We have to organize and unite. We have to organize and unite. Our problem is we don't organize and unite. When you seen that California rally at the Sacramento Capitol, mm-hmm. you've seen all those Caucasians brothers and sisters with no masks on, no gloves on, saying Gavin Newsom is worse than Hitler, and, and open California, and they were crying and brought their babies up there and all that. You've seen them organize and unite for You're something right. that they all believed in on one level. No matter how wrong it was, you see them all organize and unite. Once we as a people learn how to organize and unite to fights and rights and causes that are important to us, then our effectiveness will be beyond nature. You know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. We haven't done that yet. So that, you know, one, one thing we can unite around is reparations. But what we do not need is brothers like yourself talking down on reparations and saying we need to focus on reparations and something else. No, we need to focus on reparations. And that's that. And, and because that's how we got to really, you know, get to our people when it comes to getting back what's ours. I think you and I are the saying the same thing. You the just not trying to hear what I'm saying. The libertarians are not going to fight for us when it comes to reparations the way me and you are going to fight. 
True. The Democrats. Now, can I can I speak now? The Democrats. I'm not going to fight for reparations the way you and I are going to fight for reparations. True. The Republicans are not going to fight for reparations the way myself and you will fight for reparations. So it's up to us to get the people that we know are intellectually independent or are willing to be intellectually independent, organize and unite them to fight for a bigger agenda that is bigger than themselves, if you get what I'm saying. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. I'm with you on that. And again, we're saying the same thing. I'm saying there's a way of getting reparations. Yeah, we're saying the same thing, but you're not saying it's right, right. restitution. <laughs> <laughs> Now, let me give you an example. DuPont, the company DuPont, right? Very famous, you know, multi-trillion dollar, multi-billion dollar, whatever company. They break in all of this money. Historically have been known to have been associated with the transatlantic slave trade, right? Okay. So, we have historical fact that shows that they were guilty of that. You sue the shit out of them. You take all that money that they've collected off of our backs, and now you have a big chunk of money to give us. You see what I'm saying? Instead, now, that's just one example. You do that to every company and every company that you investigate and discover that has been guilty of, of such a thing. The American government itself has been guilty of such a thing. We sue it as a whole. You see what I'm saying? And now we get all of that money. Now... Where the pay comes in, that's where I'm talking about restitution. These companies, they have their money. Reparations is taking money from innocent people that have nothing to do with it. The average American taxpayer. That's what I'm saying. We need to no, stop. No, no, reparations, no. The presentation no, of no, the presentation no, 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 of the solutions have been to so tax not, everybody to pay that. back I the black not, community. I will not allow you to say that. Speak no, on it, then. Tell me what I people, where I misunderstood. Wildstar. A lot of these people's ancestors benefited off slavery. A lot of these homes that they have are off the backs of slavery. Uh -huh. and you know it, and you know it. So to say that they are not guilty of this. And they should not pay for it. No, they are guilty of it because they're eating off the the, the 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 pain. You know, like I said a long time ago, by the words of Louis Farrakhan, he says a white man's heaven is a black man's hell. We built this nation. If so what about eating, the Mexican though? If a Mexican no, came no, no, over from Mexico just Mexican. last year, I'm not talking about the Mexicans. They, the Mexicans they're taxpayers. The Mexicans, the Mexicans don't have the majority of the wealth. What you talking about, man? They make up a great population. <laughs> no, they don't, but they don't, I, don't, I know they make up a they don't have the majority of the wealth, and you know it. They create a lot of that wealth, they trust me. Wealth, if they were to concentrate the, the Spanish about, dollar like we could with the black community. With I'm talking about getting back with ours. The Mexicans, they got to fight too. They, they, they come in here and trying to work and they got their own fight. I'm talking about getting back with ours in a way to reparations. I'm saying Jim, John, Sully, and Sally got motherfucking 30 acres, okay? Them 30 acres were passed down from John and Billy. Billy and John got them 30 acres from Tom and, and Jefferson. Tom and Jefferson got them from George and Washington. That all came from slaves, okay? From right now, today. That's yeah. the, the land that they sit on. That all comes from us. Every family that have generated, which is a lot of families yeah. that have generated from slavery, should pay their reparations. And those should people, again, they're corporations. People. Like, for instance, you have you, you, you have farmers that own about, land. I'm talking about not just the corporations. I'm talking about private households, private entities. The families. I'm talking about private right. families, private last names. God damn it. If right. You see a brother name out there named um, 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 James... I don't know. Um, James, DuPont. <laughs> James Shit. What? DuPont. Shit. Yeah, James DuPont. Or Vanderbilt. Um, yeah, yeah. Or James fucking Vanderbilt. Rothschild. If you, see, or... if, you a brother, if you see a brother named James Vanderbilt, we need to track down who the fuck Vanderbilt is and get the reparations from Vanderbilt because that slave name was passed down from generation to generation to generation to generation. James Baldwin never got to know, or, or whatever his name is, whoever, not James Baldwin, because we love James Baldwin, but whoever the, 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 the uh, uh, person is, that last name is not their original name. Mm -hmm. So even my last name, Clark, 
Clark is not my my you know my name name. Clark sounds like a slave name. Sounds like one of them names. I should be able to track down whoever the slave master was. And that's and another. Let me add that really quickly because you brought up a good point. That's another portion of it. How can we track down each and every one of our ancestors to find out if they were actually involved in it? Because a lot of us, not all of us, <laughs> came over after all of that. You know, came over in the 40s and 50s, 60s and 70s. You know what I'm saying? You got a lot of African Americans that are here that are, shit, they're like second generation. And that's what I'm saying about charging everybody. If you got African Americans from Nigeria, Somalia, yeah, and but all more, these other countries but no, that came but here in the more, 80s and 90s and more, got nothing to do with the slave trade. But there's more, there was, there's more sons of slaves in American prisons. There's more sons of slaves in the projects and the ghettos of America. There's more sons of slaves that are denied adequate and fair health care. There mm -hmm. are more sons of slaves that have been um, disproportionately um, um, incarcerated due to the war on drugs. There are more sons of slaves who have been brutalized and systematically oppressed by this American dictatorship. Black people. I'm not talking about the Africans. I'm not talking about the Haitians. I'm not talking about the Jamaicans. I'm talking about the sons of slaves. Mm -hmm. Not the second generation. There are more sons of slaves than there are second generation. So I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to deflect and generalize the conversation. How am I deflecting it? I'm you're saying to it, that's going to take a long time. Huh? That's going to take a long time. What you're talking I about is going to take, take a long time. I know it's going. we should be working with those second generation allies to help bridge the gap. But there's another gap that needs to be bridged between African Americans and Africans. You know that as well. You know that as well. Yeah. But I'm saying, also, with regards to getting the money right now... There's also <laughs> another gap that needs to be bridged with the older African-Americans and the younger African-Americans. There's so... I mean, on so many different levels, there's so much work to be done. Yeah. I agree I'm with you on that. Hard work and our work. I understand that. I'm also saying that the best way, I think, to, 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 to fight these systems, fight this oppressed system and talk about reparations and get what's due to us is not generalize or try to deflect on situations. What I think we need to do is start our own de-escalation tactical teams, you know, start in um, uh, uh, infiltrating these political systems and um, uh, with the black agenda, because like we were talking about the simple libertarian party lacks, and I am a libertarian, but I feel like the libertarian party lacks the black agenda. Absolutely, because it takes um, black candidates in order to promote the black agenda. And there aren't many in the <laughs> Libertarian Party. There's not many black people in the Libertarian Party to begin with. And as far as the black community, we're looking for a political outlet, you know, uh, a political party to get those um, desires to have that be achieved. We're thinking the Democratic Party, you know, um, is going to provide that. It's not. You know, they're just the mouthpiece doing a whole lot of talking. Republicans is perceived as being, uh, you know, racist and prejudiced. So uh, not too many people are gravitating, uh, gravitating towards that. So black people are looking for a party to represent us. And we need to try to focus on infiltrating a party, you know, and using that party as a means, as a platform to achieve exactly what we want. The Libertarian Party is perfect for it because of what its principles stand on, which is live and let live. You can have yours. You can have whatever you want. Just leave me alone, you know. <laughs> and um, I, I think we can all get behind that um, that idea all alone, no matter what your race may well, be. Yeah, I agree. I know you have a conversation coming up. What time does your conversation start? Uh, real soon. So I got to get out of here. But uh, okay, so I do I wanna, appreciate I wanna, you having me on. Listen. Anything you got to plug in? Anything you want to say or plug in? Before yes, you get I do want to plug the Taxation is Theft Fest tit fest. <laughs> taxation is Theft Fest is this weekend, uh, this Saturday and Sunday. It's a, a, a two-day virtual conference that's being held by Libertarian presidential candidate Dan Taxation is Theft Berman. So please check out TaxationIsTheftFest.com because I'll be performing 
I'll be speaking on libertarianism uh, for about an hour. So uh, chime in this Saturday, uh, May 16th at about noon. Taxation is theftfest.com. Check it out. Thank you, Nicholas Wildstar. Thank you for always being the wonderful guest on Conversations with Mr. Clark. Hey, Thank anytime, you for being man. a free thinker. Um, and I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm declaring, declaring uh, to you and your family that the rest of this year will be the best of your year. I'm declaring oh, and declaring God, um, financial breakthroughs in your household. You guys are going to have financial breakthroughs um, come out of nowhere. So expect a check to come out of nowhere in the mailbox. I don't know where it's coming from, but it's coming. I and, like um, that. And I also want to um, kiss the uh, wife for me, kiss oh, the yeah. baby for me. Um, I love you, brother. Uh, keep yeah. fighting for liberty. And, and much love uh, you. Assalamu alaikum, salam, salam, shalom. God bless you. God bless you, man. All right. Um, just wrapped up a powerful conversation with my good friend, Nicholas Wildstar. Um, he's kind of an oddball, good guy. Sometimes he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about, but it sounds good. And that's why we love him because he's open, you know, he's open to receive the criticism when, um, when he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. And I'm always open to give that criticism when needed. And I also want the feedback back. If I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, hold me accountable. I'm always open to be held accountable. This has been an episode, a powerful episode of Conversations with Mr. Clark featuring Nicholas Wildstar. I didn't really get to talk about a lot of the things that I wanted to talk about, but that could be a whole nother conversation. Once again, thank you all for joining Conversations with Mr. Clark. I'll be having another episode coming shortly. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and by the way, follow me on my Instagram to stay connected to the movement. Uh, uh, the, 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 the link is right there. Um, official underscores to Monte Clark. There we go. That was great. <laughs>